my name is Greg Ciola. I'm with Crossing Jordan Ministries, and I'm doing a really, really important video with uh, Tyler Hansen. I met Tyler through TikTok, actually, if you can believe that. Um, he's one of the best guys I've ever found out there on TikTok. And my whole story is that uh, I first heard about the Flat Earth approximately two years ago, two and a half years ago, which, considering how long it's been around, I'm actually surprised that, it, that I just heard about it at that point. But uh, the first time I heard about it, nobody really gave me a whole spiel. Um, they just made some crazy comments, and I thought it was nuts. And I started following TikTok and looking at a lot of TikTok videos. My <laughs> initial reaction was I was going to try to find a bunch of things that proved that it wasn't true. Um, but as I started following a lot of other videos on TikTok, it actually raised more questions about why there is a flat earth or why people believe there's a flat earth. So where I stand now... Um, since probably December of last year, roughly, um, everything that I've seen, I believe that we are on a flat earth um, and that there's a whole different spiel uh, than what we've been taught. And so it's pretty amazing. Um, but I'm, I'm interviewing uh, Tyler because Tyler is one of the best guys out there and he's connected with just about everybody out there in the movement. And so I wanted to hear him tell us a little bit about it because talking to him on the phone it sounds like a lot of the things that he got into were similar to what I got into except I think he started it a little bit sooner than me so Tyler uh thank you for being on the interview I appreciate your time um why don't you start by telling me what initially drew you to the idea that the earth is flat well I think I started out just like every other person that ever hears about it and they think it's the stupidest thing they've ever heard about um I remember it's probably been about maybe even three years now, I remember seeing a Netflix documentary and I just, you know, kept popping up. I'm scrolling through and it kept popping up. And I, I remember telling my wife, I was like, what is this flat earth documentary? I was like, I need to watch this just to see how any idiot in the world can, I like, I just want to see one reason how someone can still think the world is flat. And, you know, going into it, I, I thought it was probably people never had the mindset that they lived on a globe that they just were brought up that way. Like they were hillbillies or uneducated people. So I just, I just wanted to see, you know, I, I've always been kind of an open-minded guy, but I wasn't for that, but I just wanted to see, let me see one reason in this movie why people could think that. So I watched the movie at one point there were, they were talking about flight paths and the, the flight path was like, I was like, Oh, that's kind of curious. Why would that, flight path be like that on a globe and it, it was like okay there's something there and then by the end of the movie they just proved it and they're like it's it's because of this so i ended up finishing that movie and i was like all right flat earth is the stupidest thing i've ever seen i uh told my wife it was dumb told anyone that believed in it, it was dumb and i didn't think about it again for probably a year and then after a year goes by i started I had some experiences that, to be honest, I can only explain as um, divine intervention. And I, you know, I, I say that not saying I'm more special than anyone else. Like, I don't think I'm special, but I think we're all special. But for whatever reason, God wanted me to know that the stars were not what I thought they were for my first 42 years of my life. Um, and it, it's kind of hard to explain, but I just started seeing things with the stars that I never would have seen just of my own volition, my own doing. I just, there were things that happened and I can get into that further if we want to, but things that cued me into the fact that the stars weren't balls of gas burning trillions, if not quintillions of miles away. And at the same time, I was realizing that I, I was also going down the rabbit hole of wanting to know if aliens were real because you know like in my mind at the time i thought we lived in this infinite universe with infinite planets and infinite galaxies and infinite stars and just the sheer mathematics of it all to me i i thought there have to be aliens that exist and in my mind i was like they've probably visited here just because you know there's roswell and different things so I started going down the alien rabbit hole. And at the very same time, I also wanted to go, I started watching things on near death experience. So I, I was kind of approaching three different topics at the same time. And 
going into it, I was not a spiritual person. I, I was raised um, Catholic, but, you know, fell away from that pretty early on as just from going to school and learning about the big bang and science and evolution and, you know, going to Sunday school and just, you know, like not enjoying that, not feeling like I was actually learning of anything that was useful in my life. So even though I was raised Catholic, I was baptized, I was confirmed. Um, it wasn't anything, it didn't stick. And, you know, I would go to church for funerals and weddings. Um, and I just really believed we lived in this physical world and that, you know, if you asked me if I believed in God two years ago, I, I probably would have said yes, but it would have been a 50-50 belief, 50% there's God, 50%, maybe when, when we die, that's just it. We're in the ground for the rest of eternity. Um, so I was approaching these, the stars, the near-death experience and the aliens from a background of thinking we live in this you know, solid 3D world, not having very much awareness of God and spiritual spirituality and um, kind of the supernatural. So as I started to go down those holes, boy, did my view on, on this world change and my experiences that I had. Um, I sit here today with, you know, complete 180 degree change of what I believed two years ago. <clears throat> Well, I think the similar thing happened to me, but in a different way. I mean, I've been a, a believer for over 30 years. You know, I yeah. read the Bible every day. And so when I first heard Flat Earth, I thought, this is just a bunch of baloney. I mean, where are they coming up with this? But I think that I, the thing that really caught my attention was another guy on TikTok that got into it all from the biblical perspective. And I wrote a ton of scriptures down and there's other stuff that I've been able to download from TikTok as well that shows you all these different scriptures. I think the biggest one, and I don't know if there's any specific ones with you that stand out the most, but the whole story in the book of Genesis that talks about the firmament seemed to be the thing that kind of caught my attention the most because I never really heard about it before. And then they started connecting the dots to the firmament with the movies from the Simpsons to all these other movies that they've made including Hillary Clinton's talked about the glass dome and everything else. And you keep doing all this research and you find out that NASA really can't go where they claim to be going. And, you know, then I looked at the whole thing about the sun and the moon and the measurement of it. And it's all hypotheses. There's no provable fact that they've ever been able to come up with. And then the big thing here, which I bought, I don't know if you can see this, it's the book of Enoch. And uh, there's a bunch of stuff in there, but, the one thing that really caught my attention in here, it says the great luminary, which is named the sun forever and ever. And that which thus rises is the great luminary. And so is named according to its appearance, according as the Lord commanded. As he rises, so he sets and decreases not and rests not, but runs day and night. And his light is sevenfold brighter than that of the moon. So that one's what caught my attention. Seven times brighter than the light of the moon. So I didn't believe that the moon was actually reflecting the sun after reading that. And I, I still don't know that the moon is a reflection of the sun. I don't think it is. And then the last thing here, it says, but as regards size, they are both equal. Now, I know a lot of Christians are going to think, oh, well, that, that's why the book of Enoch's not in the Bible. But actually, the book of Enoch is one of the best books to have at hand with everything that's going on. It's telling you right there, the sun and the moon are the same size. So that right there tells you. The distance NASA's come up with is all baloney. And if you do research on Google to try to come up with it, it doesn't equal out to what they say. So that and the firmament and the fact that they're not able to leave, that the whole moon landing was a complete fraud. I know I'm rambling on about a lot of different stuff, but I, I, what are your thoughts about all this? Well, I, um, it, it's funny. We do, we have um, very different very different angles from approaching it because I think, you know, you came from a believer background and I needed to have, I needed to have the science show me that, that God was real. It's, it's kind of weird, you know, like I think you were able to see it because you were a believer and saw that it matched up with the Bible. I needed to see it, that the science was there and I was a full flat earth believer before I became a believer in the Bible and God, because I was sitting 
um, coincidentally enough, I was sitting in a hotel room in Florida for a dad's or a, a friend's dad's funeral. And I just, it was a cloudy, crummy day and I just had time to kill and I'm sitting there. And this was like, man, this was early on in my flat earth journey when I had done a whole lot of research, a whole lot of investigating myself and not just believing things that I saw on TikTok or on YouTube, but going places like to the Warren Sand, Sand Dunes in Michigan to see the Chicago skyline with my own eyes, which shouldn't be possible on the globe calculator or the curve of the earth that they give us. Um, so, you know, I, I'm sitting there knowing we don't live on a globe and I pick up the Bible, which I never really had done. Honestly, I had really only done it if I was at a church funeral or wedding. And if I picked up the Bible, it was to move it out of my way to sit down as terrible as that sounds. But I, for whatever reason, I decided to pick it up. And there it was on page one talking about the firmament. And I was already, a, I already knew that there was a barrier above us and that we didn't have infinite space and planets to go to. So I had this thought in this image of the place we actually live. And then sure it is right there on page one. And I, so I, it just hit me like a ton of bricks. I was, I said to myself, oh my God, the truth has been there my whole life, right there on page one of the Bible, and I've denied it. And it was just like this moment where I knew that the Bible was a literal account of things. And obviously there are parables and there are different things that are not taken literally, but they, in the Bible, it lets you know that. And anything that is written, in my opinion, in the Bible that isn't supposed to be um, poetic or a parable is literal. And I think the account of Genesis is a literal account of the creation of the creation of earth. And it matched up perfectly with what I already believed this place to be. And it was just, it was an amazing moment. And I haven't felt the same since because I have known that we live in this created place by God and not some random accident created from a big bang billions of years ago. And it's been life-changing to be honest. It has. It's changed my life as well, um, because I thought it was all baloney. I really did. And then when I started seeing all this stuff that was going on, then my eyes got open and I'm like, wow, I can't believe that they're able to get away with this. Um, so, you know, if you wanted to question flat earth, the initial thing I thought of is how could they believe the earth is flat with NASA? You know, they got all these rockets and they got all this stuff in space. And and I thought that a lot of the pictures that they showed us from outer space were correct and everything. But as I really started to study and all the different videos and all the different information that's out there, um, a lot of people have proven that everything NASA has done has been faked. And you can't trust anything that they've put out. And at just about every single thing that they have published, you can look at it including their own documents that talk about the earth being flat, but including a lot of the other things they claim they send up in space, which aren't really going out into space. I think that's raised a lot of questions for a lot of people, myself included, because I thought, well, how hard is it to prove that the earth is a globe? All you got to do is just go out there. Why doesn't NASA just say, okay, the whole flat earth movement's a fraud. We're just going to go out. We can prove that it's a globe, but they really can't. I mean, the, the big thing was the whole international space station and I found out months ago that, you know, almost everything they were doing was being filmed underwater and green screens and everything else. The whole lunar landing was fake. And they're not going to ever admit to it. They're going to say it's all baloney and anything we talk about is a lie. But they can't prove their truth or what they claim to be the truth. So, yeah, that was the I guess if there was a fourth piece to the, you know, I mentioned going down. Um, the path of figuring out the stars weren't what I thought. I was going down the alien rabbit hole, and then I was also going down the near-death experience rabbit hole. And if I had, if I were to add a fourth piece to that, it would be looking into NASA, which I had never done. It was looking into the moon landing, looking into their images, which is are just you know they're not photographs, they're images. They're they literally, if you look what they title them, it says images, and then you look what. The definition of images are and it's not photographs it's you know it's hand drawn it's computer generated it's um composites of multiple pictures it, none of them are photographs and that's what we should have if they have all these satellites in space if all these rockets have gone 
you know, thousands of miles past the Earth's atmosphere. And none of that exists. And, you know, the simplest thing that they could ever do, and it seems so silly when you think about it, but the easiest thing they could ever do to prove every single flat Earth or wrong is from one of their rockets or from one of their satellites, have a, a distant shot of, of the globe Earth, and then just zoom in on someone upside down in Australia. You know, they, it would right away, they would just, it would shut everybody up. There would be no controversy. There'd be no, you could zoom in on someone upside down in Australia, and then you could zoom in on someone right side up in North America. And right away, there's just, you know, there's no controversy, done deal. All the flat earthers shut up and admit they're wrong, but that will never happen because we don't live on what they claim we live on. No, that's not true. To, not they, to mention they the all their, spins. yeah, not to mention all the, you know, 666 numerology involved in all of the heliocentric model. You know, once you start going down that rabbit hole, you realize that just can't be coincidence that the earth is rotating around the sun at 600 or 66,600 miles per hour. The curve rate is, you know, 0.666 miles squared. And I mean, it just goes on and on. Yeah, that's pretty wild. You know, one of the things that I thought of that could prove that the earth was not flat was uh, a couple of these guys that went up into space. And um, I guess they were at like 120,000 feet up. One of the guys was up there for a while and then he jumped and I originally saw that and I thought, okay, he's probably proving that the earth is, is uh, a sphere. And I know if you saw him, he would tell you that it is. But the thing is, if we're moving at a thousand miles an hour and that guy goes up into space and he's up there for close to an hour between the time he got up there, stayed up there and then eventually jumped, then how would that have happened the way that it happened? that he can actually land basically in the same spot if the earth isn't if the earth is moving at a thousand miles an hour if he went up in california or wherever then he would have landed i don't know how much further out from where a thousand, he if he was, yeah yeah if he was up there for an hour he should have been a thousand miles away from where he went up because it's the circumference of the earth is around twenty four thousand miles so, supposedly so yeah he should have he should have gone from california to new york in an hour <laughs> And he landed in the exact same spot. Yeah. I actually just, I don't know if you saw, but I just did a video on that yesterday. And if you ask, if you ask the internet how, how high you have to go to be, to see the earth spinning, it, it will say there is no distance you can go up to see the earth spin because it's so slow in comparison to its size that it, you won't be able to see it with the eye. Yet you watch any videos of supposed spacewalks or the iss or man the funniest one for people that ever hear this go look up the first ever russian spacewalk and it is hilarious that they pass it off as real footage i mean the earth is like flying by and i mean it just it's the ter most terrible cgi and then if you go look at the u.s spacewalk the earth is moving at a different rate and i mean to 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 see these videos and to have an open mind and still think they're real, I don't understand how people can do that. I understand, like, you know, I never looked into it. This, as soon as I started looking into it, the veil started coming down. But I just, you know, I just, NASA was like an afterthought. I thought space was cool. I thought, you know, I was a big astronomy fan. But I never, I never tried to peel back the curtain. I never tried to look further into it. I just took what I saw and believed it but once you actually investigate man there's it's so easy to start seeing behind especially especially with nasa's footage like if people hear this and they're think we're crazy or think we're conspiracy theorists take five minutes and go look up the first russian spacewalk and then go look up the first u.s spacewalk because they're available on youtube and if you can watch those videos and have and be an honest person with yourself and think they're real then you got to ask yourself questions. <laughs> you know, you got to you got to look at yourself in the mirror and say, "Am I being honest with myself?" Hmm. Well, you got so many people that are in this movement now that believe we're being totally lied to by NASA. Um, I didn't learn this until about five or six months ago that NASA's symbol is actually the tongue of a serpent. 
Do you know about that? Have you heard that? Oh yeah. I, um, that, and as well as it oddly enough matched up with some, some of the eclipse path. I don't know if you saw that. The, I think the 2000, there were, I can't remember the exact dates, but this eclipse we just had a couple of weeks ago and the prior one, the, they match up perfectly with a little serpent tongue and with the eclipse path. So hmm. there was some double double meaning going on there. That's crazy. Not to mention, not to mention that Na, not NASA, but NASA in Hebrew means to deceive. Huh. Yeah, most of the most of the elite that are within NASA are all Freemasons. That yeah. I know. And they're signed, yeah. yeah, Revelation 12, 9, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. And here their symbol is the snake tongue over the earth. So it's made me distrust every single thing that NASA has talked about. I can't even get into all of it in this video because I've tried to make the folders and make notes. And I have so many, I can't even keep them all straight. But uh, they've lied to us about everything. Um, here, For here's sure. this book, 100 Proofs that the Earth... I guess it's not going to come out good on the screen there. 100 proofs that the earth is not a globe. Okay. And there's a bunch of good stuff in here, but here's one here it says, um, and this is important since we just had the eclipse. It said the Newtonian hypothesis involves the necessity of the sun in the case of a lunar eclipse being on the opposite side of a globular earth to cast its shadow on the moon. But since eclipses of the moon have taken place with both the sun and and the moon above the horizon, it follows that it cannot be the shadow of the earth that eclipses the moon, that the theory is a blunder, and that it is nothing less than a proof that the earth is not a globe. I don't know if you've read this, heard this, and I don't know what your thoughts are about the eclipse that happened last week, because that's the big story that we're hearing from a lot of people that are really researching this stuff in detail, and that is there's something else out there in space that we're not able to see. You can call it the black hole sun, you can call it something else reflections that's the other thing which i haven't really heard much of until recently that you know we're seeing a lot of reflections the sun and the moon could actually be reflections of the original they could be in a different sphere so i don't really know what your thoughts are on all that but leading up to the eclipse i had done some videos on how the the sun that we see and this is my opinion um the sun that we see isn't a solid object and it's not even the source of the sun but it's like you know if you were to take a magnifying glass and try to um you know put it in the sun it would create a beam of light and a point okay so the point if you have a magnifying glass you can create a point of light on the ground from the sun so in my opinion the sun we see is nothing more than a projection from the source that's in the firmament and the bible talks about the sun and the moon being in the firmament. So I, I believe, and this isn't just conjecture, I think I've seen evidence where when there is an eclipse, you can actually see some sort of source beyond it. And I think you don't nor normally see that because the sun is so bright. You know, I've done an experiment um, where you can take your iPhone and if you take a glass paperweight and you shine your iPhone light on a glass paperweight, you see like a perfect little ball of light that literally looks like a mini sun, but the light in the paperweight isn't the sun. It's just the projection from my iPhone. So I think the sun we see is something like that. We're seeing a projection from the source in the firmament. And I think the eclipse kind of provides a lot of um, evidence of that, especially this most recent one, where not only could you see where we see the sun being eclipsed but beyond it it looks like it looked like there was another eclipse and then even beyond that it looked like there was another eclipse and in my opinion that's the different layers of the firmament you know maybe the seven layers of heaven maybe the seven layers of the firmament where you were seeing reflection through whatever the material of the firmament is whether it's glass whether it's frozen oxygen whether it's a toroidal field whether it's something that you know none of us have ever experienced because it's god's creation who knows but I, I think the sun is in the firmament and I think the sun we see isn't a solid object, but just kind of almost like a rainbow, like a projection from that actual source of the sun and what the eclipse is. And I have no idea. I, I don't think it's the moon. I think there's evidence that it's not the moon. I think it's actually what is eclipsing the sun is coming from behind what we see. 
So I don't think there's anything coming in front of the sun. I think it's coming behind the projection of the sun. So I know that's kind of hard to visualize without me demonstrating it, but um, I think it's, I, I don't know if it's a, it's a celestial object that we can't see. It's maybe it's, you know, at a frequency that our eyes can't see. Maybe it's a, who knows? I don't know. <laughs> you know, I don't want to claim to know anything I say about what it actually is, a speculation. I think I've seen people recently who have been up in a plane catching it, that they see orbs around the eclipse um, from the last one in 2017. So I don't know. I don't claim to know that. I do claim to believe that it's not the moon that's causing it because this most recent eclipse, the moon was in the vicinity, but it wasn't right in front of it. It wasn't, um, it wasn't aligned with it. And we couldn't see the moon because it was in the new moon phase. Um, but it was, if, if I had been tracking the sun and the moon leading up to it, and they were going to be close, but they weren't going to be overlapping. <clears throat> Since you got into this whole thing, you've connected with all these elite people within the Flat Earth movement, Dave uh, Weiss being one of them. I actually don't know who all of them are. I'm still doing a lot of research myself to understand who the big players are. And But I know Dave is one of the best because he's got the software app that you can get on your phone. He gets into all kinds of stuff. He's got tons and tons of videos. Um, what are what are your thoughts about Dave Weiss and what he had to say about this with the eclipse? And who else, like Dave, do you think has information to this level? <clears throat> Dave's phenomenal. Um, he's done it a long time. He's extremely knowledgeable. He's great at it because while he talks about it, he can provide visuals. And, you know, they're visuals of things that everyone can experience in their own life. And it just gives you a different way to think of it. Um, you know, for example, uh, I was down in Florida, your neck of the woods, not too long ago. And I had seen people zoom in on the sun that looked like it was you know, it was on a sunrise and it looked like the ocean was blocking it because, you know, for most people's perspective, if you see half of a sun during a sunrise, it's because the earth hasn't rotated enough for us to see the full sun. But I had seen people zoom in on it. And when you zoom in on a half covered sun with the conditions right, you actually zoom in and you see that the sun is very high in the air. And the only reason you're seeing half of it covered is because the atmosphere can create a lensing effect. So it's like, you know, if you're if you are looking at something through um, a magnifying glass, it's not going to give you the right the same appearance as it would with your naked eye. Or if you're far away from something, perspective works where something in the distance is going to look lower in your field of view. So if you zoom in on a sun during the right conditions, that's half covered. You can see it's literally, you know, way up in the sky. Um, so I did that, and that, this was based on something I saw David Weiss do, and I, you know, I didn't fully believe it when I saw him do it. Not because I didn't, I thought he was lying, but because I don't like to believe things unless I can experience it myself. So I saw him do it, and then I had this opportunity to do it, and sure enough, I zoomed in on a half-blocked sun by the ocean, and when I zoomed in with my phone, it was way up in the air. So that kind of blew my mind, and and he does stuff like that all the time, where he will give you a different perspective from what we've always been told on how something works and nine times out of ten how something works makes a lot more sense the way he says it than what we've been told and what we've been led to believe our whole lives um so yeah he, dave's great um you know he's been super he was someone that early on when i was saying some things that even flat earthers and truthers um weren't agreeing with he was one of the first to kind of like have my back and be like hey you know i i'm not going to count it out you know i i counted out flat earth at first and this is saying dave and um and he's learned to not count things out because he knows how large the deceit is and you know people's ideas that differ from him he's willing to look into it and i think everyone should should be like that is if you're so closed off, you're not willing to hear other people's ideas that might end up making more sense than the ideas you hold as your beliefs, then kind of, again, like I said earlier, you got to look at yourself in the mirror and say, what's going on with me that I'm not willing to have an open mind to different people's thoughts and understandings of the world, especially when they end up making much more sense logically. 
Well, what do you think the main reason for them lying about the whole flat earth is for? What, because, you know, if you study history, and I did a lot of that here, even with my own Bible, and I got into that, and I mean, I even got into uh, Nicholas uh, Copernicus and others like him. You know, this whole thing about having a sphere was was not believed up until I don't know how many hundred years ago. But I think I am 100 percent evidence of why the lie. And I think as crazy as it might sound to some people and maybe it won't because people if, if people are listening to this and they're already in the they already believe in god they're already know we live in a spiritual place i think 100 percent the lie is to keep people from knowing god exists i think it's a luciferian or satanic lie that um is to make people think they came from a big bang accident evolved from monkeys and if you can think that, like I did for 42 years, then it takes God out of it. At least it did for me. You know, and I know there's plenty of people that believe in Big Bang and the Bible. And to me, um, I, I think that's a hard thing to do unless you're, unless you're not believing the Bible is literal. And I only began, became a believer of the Bible once I realized that Genesis was literal. And if Genesis can be literal, then the rest of it can be literal. Um, so I think it's to hide God. I really do. I think, I think we're living in a, and you know, this is my opinion, and this is not a lot of, even truthers have gone down the hole on this one, but I think we're living in a time that it talks about in the Bible where it talks about Satan being released for a short season to de deceive the four corners of the earth. And I think we're living in that short little season where he's deceiving a whole lot of people and myself was included and i think it's billions of people that are being deceived with the fact that they live on a globe because to me there's not one person i know in the entire world that didn't at least at one time believe that they lived on a spinning water ball created from a big bang billions of years ago and probably even evolved from monkeys and like i said some people can still think God fits in that equation. God didn't fit into that equation for me. God was taken out of the picture because I believed in science. And it wasn't until I learned that the science was an intentional lie. And I'm not calling all scientists liars, but the ones at the top, just like the ones at the top of NASA are liars. And, you know, not all NASA employees are liars, but the ones at the top are. The ones at the top of the government are liars. And unfortunately, you know, I think for both you and I, we didn't realize that for a, a large proportion of our lives. And once you realize that there's no going back. Oh, I was just going to I was asking, I was curious your ultimate goal with doing these videos, if it's to bring people who already believe in the Bible, some truth, some, some insight into people who believe differently that, than they do, but also believe the Bible, just curious where what the ultimate goal of this is well i would like to wake up as many people as possible because we're in a world full of lies and even when you're seeking out the truth we're still confronted with one lie after the other i spent my whole life in the health and nutritional industry and i see one lie after the other on that um, this whole thing with the flat earth a lot of people and i'm hearing it from some ministers oh it doesn't matter much it doesn't matter but the fact of the matter is it's in the bible it's there in the scriptures for us to talk about. So the same way you told me that you really weren't on fire for God, you weren't like reading the Bible, your background was totally different than mine, which was more of a Bible-based guy. The fact is, we've both been hoodwinked in one way or the other, but to you, it's opened you up to the scriptures. You want to get fired up and read all these scriptures now. For me, I'm like, I can't believe these scriptures didn't pop out at me and so, yes, this is a big issue. If the devil is creative enough to lie to the whole world on this magnitude, then it's, this should be something that we all talk about, which was another question I wanted to ask you, because there's, I know there's a bunch of them, but, you know, the one guy that is coming out against it now kind of frustrated me a little bit because he's got a four and a half hour video and I don't really see any solid information that he's putting out that proves that the earth is a globe. And that's Justin Peters. Uh, 
you know, I have followed a lot of stuff on YouTube videos, especially from a lot of ministers. There's a lot of things going on, a lot of exposure going on with people within the TV movement and all kinds of things happening there. So Justin's done a lot of that. He's exposed a lot of these guys. So when he started questioning it, I'm like, where's this guy coming from? Where is he going with all this? And he doesn't believe it. He thinks that we're a sphere and he wants to put a warning out to all the Christians to uh, question it and then not go anywhere with it. Yet, did this guy really watch all this information? I mean, I've got hundreds and hundreds of videos that I downloaded that are unbelievable. I mean, you watch 10 of them and it's going to make you raise questions. You're not going to buy into anything that they've been telling us once you start watching a lot of videos like you talked about that you can go out and see uh, Chicago from 50 or 60 miles away. I've seen all these airline pilots that have claimed that the earth is flat. Then you got all these symbols from the World Health Organization, the United Nations, and all these other companies that all have the flat earth. They don't show you a globe. So all that raises questions. So, so my question to you would be, what are your thoughts about Justin Peters? Is he, why is he not standing up for this? And yet he doesn't really seem to have some solid information to prove that the earth is a sphere. He's just going that route because like him and all of us, we all were born and raised into this world, told that it's a sphere because of NASA, who controlled the entire school system with what we've been taught. What, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, well, I don't want to speak specifically to him just because I, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm familiar enough with him to know who he is and where some of the things he has said, but I'm not familiar enough with him to speak specifically to him, but I can speak about um, some people in general. And I think, I think the way that they continue to hold this lie up is that they have people in positions of power speak a lot of truth and they, they gain trust and they, they create, um, they trust in people where they trust everything they say. And you only can do that by giving a lot of truth. But so they can give 90% truth or even 95% truth, but the 5% direction they want to lead them astray or they want to feed them a lie, they probably also get them to believe in that lie because they're like, well, these this person at NASA, this person at my church, this person in the government said a lot of things I agree with. So why would this be any different? And that's that's how they continue to keep people in the dark. And I, you know, I don't know specifically about him. I have my suspicions, but I think there are three classes of people right now. And I think there, and this is specifically to flat earth. Um, I think there are people who are deceived, which I was two years ago. I was someone that was deceived. And I don't mean that rudely because we were all deceived at one point, but there are people that are deceived. There are people that are trying to inform people that they're deceived. And then there are deceivers. And I think if I had to guess, um, I would put him in the class of someone that's a deceiver. Just the way I've seen him present things, just the way he twists things and just the way he's attacked the movement. Um, because when you, when you really look into it, when you have an open mind and look into it, the evidence is there. You just need to have an open mind. And I don't, I don't see him as someone who's looked into it very strongly. I see him as someone that's probably been talking a lot of truth for a long time and, you know, potentially was approached and offered money, potentially someone that has always been in a position that, you know, is in some secret society and has alternative motives. I don't know. Like I said, I can't speak too specifically to him, but there are a whole lot of people in all walks of life that are there to deceive. And, you know, I, I know this to be a fact in the mainstream media, people like Neil deGrasse Tyson, who 1000% knows that we don't live on a globe, yet he preaches it all the time. Guys like Bill Nye, the same story. Now, one thing I really want your generation to embrace is that the earth is a closed system. We cannot leave the earth. There's no place to go. There's no place to throw your trash. There are people, you know, in the news and the media on different social media platforms like YouTube and Instagram and TikTok that are literally 
agents for the devil that are wanting to keep people in the dark. And, you know, the flat earth thing, it might sound silly, but when you realize how much it opens your eyes to all the lies, it's like the, it's the end all be all to once you know that they lie about that, there's not a thing in this world that you wouldn't, that would surprise you that they would lie about. And that's what happened to me. You know, I, I thought I was figuring out some different truths here and there. And once here and there, I was wrong. But once I came to the truth of the flat earth, um, it revealed all the lies and it revealed all the truths. And I, um, you know, I can't stress to people enough how important it is to have an open mind to look into it and not just laugh it off, especially people who already believe in God and in the Bible. And I mean, it matches the scriptures match. We do not live if you were just going off the bible the scriptures say the earth is immovable the earth is stationary the earth has is a circle not a sphere the earth is has four corners none of those things exist on a rotating a thousand miles per hour and sixty six thousand miles per hour and four hundred thousand miles per hour through the solar system and two million miles per hour through an infinite universe none of that can match what the bible says so you you know, you can try to believe in science and the Bible at the same time, or you can come to the realization that maybe the science is a lie. Total lie. Yeah. And, you know, biblically, I just saw this the other day, and I don't have it in front of me to give you the exact verse, but it says that you can't measure heaven or the earth. To think that NASA can do all this measurement and, oh, it's X amount of light years away and it's this and this, it's all baloney. I think the biggest thing that came to me out of it is that they use this entire doctrine to make the sun God, Horus. They worship the pagan God, which is the sun. And so the whole spherical earth, I think, justifies their belief on that, that that makes the sun above the earth. But the fact is, when you get into the scriptures... It tells you in Genesis chapter 1 that the sun and the moon weren't made until the fourth day. So if they weren't made until the fourth day, how could the earth be spinning around like this and then spinning around the sun and then spinning around the whole galaxy or the whole universe like they try to tell you, yet you have Polaris locked in the same spot, doesn't move at all, and there, there's so much there. There really is. And then the other thing is, um, go to the book of jo uh, Joshua chapter 10 when he was out in that battle. And he said that he spoke to the sun and the moon and they stood still. But if the earth moved the way you just said, X amount of speed, and then it's also going around the sun, and then the whole thing's moving. If he told the sun or the moon or both of them to stop, like it says in the Bible, based on the movement, there would have been catastrophic destruction everywhere if something like that happened. However, if it's a plane, a flat earth, and you have a dome that goes around the earth, and within that dome is the sun and the moon and all the stars, and they're moving around us. We don't move, which is, the Bible says we don't move. That should be a wake-up call to a lot of Christians out there. It really should. It should be something yeah, that's preached in the churches, man, because if they can get away with lying like this, then what else can they get away with? We're in the, we're in the times of great deception upon the whole earth. So I don't think that anybody who's a believer in Christ should put this aside and say, well, it's not really important. It doesn't matter. It does too matter. There's something big about this. So that I know for a fact, man. Yeah, my my mother has asked me several times. I don't understand why it matters because she sees it matters to me. I mean, I'm posting it all the time. I'm talking about it. It matters. And I, I'm like, mom. I didn't believe in God before I realized I didn't live on a globe. And I, and she is, she is someone that's like 50, kind of like I used to be like 50, 50. It's probably better to believe in God than not to just in case. And it's like, no mom, like it matters because it lets you know that God is real, that this we're living in a created place for us. And it's, um, there's nothing more important than it. There's nothing more important than it. And it, it, it shows you who the people are that we should supposedly trust that are running the government and telling us to take different uh, medications that I won't speak of, but 
Um, yeah, there's nothing more important about it. And if, you know, if you're someone that already believes in God and you're someone that still can't think it's important, well, what if you think about the kids and how kids are literally being brainwashed and, you know, lied to, you know, I, I'm not a parent, I'm only a dog dad, but I'm a teacher. And it breaks my heart that students are being lied to from such an early age, not only about the science, but a lot of a lot of our history too. And it's, you know, like if everyone knew what you and I knew or know tomorrow, the place, this place would change a lot and probably all for the better. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I totally agree with that. And I think this is, this is some of the most important information that anybody can talk about. I know I've heard a number of Christians say, oh, it doesn't really matter. Just go out and talk about Jesus. Yeah, that's obviously important. It's all important, though, because if they can get away with lying like this to this magnitude, <clears throat> what else are they lying about? Um, so here's another point that I have here on questions I was going to ask you, which I this is another new thing that I didn't know until recently, and that is the satellites from NASA and that they use helium. They're helium balloons that go up into space. This whole concept that we're firing all these satellites up there and all these satellites go around us and they're stationary up there and they're moving based on, on the sphere that's up there is not accurate. I don't know if that's 100% true or not. I know there's times I've looked out in the nighttime sky and you can see satellites and things moving, but from everything I've heard and seen, they're claiming that all these satellites are based on helium balloons. What are, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, it's easy to look up who the number one consumer in the entire world is of helium, and it's NASA. And, you know, when you look into it, you know, if you look into something like Starlink, you know, Elon Musk and these supposed Starlink satellites that are orbiting. And if you just don't believe what you're told and you look into it, I want to give you like a really easy thing. And and I did a video on this and I looked into the supposed size of these Starlink satellites and they're only the size of a table. They're supposedly the size of a kitchen table. And there is a bunch of them length, you know, like I've seen Starlink in person. I filmed it in person. And when I saw it, to me, it looked the exact same height as an airplane. And airplanes only fly about three to five miles up. And if you look up Starlink, it says Starlink is orbiting at 350 miles away. And to think that you can see a kitchen table 350 miles away when if you look at a plane only five miles up, it's tiny, baby, itty, small, and then multiply that times literally 100, and then think you can see a table 100 times further than a plane is just crazy. And then you look at the speed they're supposedly orbiting. When you look with your eyes and you take away the programming, whatever Starlink is, it's right there as high as airplanes go. It's not 350 miles away definitely not orbiting. In my opinion, it's some sort of airship and they have a way to kind of conceal what it looks like, some sort of holographic technology or, you know, they have they have technology now where you can be looking at something and it will project what's behind it. So it's almost like you're looking through it. Hmm. So, I mean, all you need to do is look at into Starlink and look at the math of how far and how big it is and then see it with your own eyes and you're like there's zero chance that what they're saying it is is what it is and yeah and nasa you know there are like you said there are satellites they're just not orbiting they're floating on helium balloons and you can you know you can research that on youtube you can type in antarctica um satelloon and they'll they'll come up you can you can find them launching they don't hide them super well it's just a matter of knowing that you can research it because most people don't know you can research that stuff. But yeah, satellites are on balloons for sure. <laughs>
interesting. There's so much that I could cover. I know I'm kind of limited on time here with this interview. I'm going to have to do another interview with you on some other things as well. Um, For sure. what you get into a lot of other subjects beyond just the whole flat earth. Uh, I've seen you talk about the asteroids, the trees, these gigantic trees that look like mountains from devil's mountain on down, um, giants. The, if you look at the, the mountain ranges at the top and stuff, I've seen this on a number of your videos and it, you can see that they're, um, dissolved giants that have made mountains. What, Tell us some of the other things you cover beyond the flat earth and what got you into all that? How did this like open the door for you to get into everything? <laughs> Man, once, um, once I kind of just figured out that a lot of the things I believed my whole life weren't true, I just went on this mission to figure out as much as I could. Because at, cause at a certain point when I realized I didn't live on a globe, I was sitting, I mean, I was just standing in my backyard, kind of in awe and in wonder at, you know, I was like, what is, like, where am I? What is this place? And it was before I had fully come um, to believe in the Bible. Um, but I just, I, I had no idea where I was. I literally was lost in my own backyard. And I didn't ever want that feeling again. So it just made me want to un uncover every stone that I had never uncovered. And Man, this, this place is so amazing. There are so many amazing things. You know, the saying is, the truth is way more interesting than fiction. And I I couldn't agree more. You know, like my favorite books growing up um, were The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. And I used to love those because it would just like let your imagination run wild on dragons and giants and uh, Middle Earth. <laughs> and when you come to realize that your favorite book that you loved because you thought was such a fantasy is actually a lot of reality um it's just fascinating and you know and some people might hear this but when you when you can find things like articles from the late 1800s and early 1900s in legitimate newspapers like the chicago tribune the new york times talking about unearthing giant remains and not just like eight or nine foot giants but 12 15 18 foot giants and there's legitimate newspaper articles all across the United States about that. And then you find the Smithsonian was the one responsible for going to collect it all. And then you find the Smithsonian was actually sued for destroying all sorts of giant bones. It starts to make you realize that giants probably existed. And then to your, you know, to even a more amazement, you realize that giants are talked about in the Bible and you're like, and it just lines up with everything. It's it lines up with they're hiding giants because it legitimizes the Bible. And it, you know, every single thing that you find out, every single thing that you find out you've been lied to about links to the fact that they're trying to hide God. It just it's mind book. Um so yeah, I've, giants is one of my favorite things to kind of dive into because at first I, you know, I thought there were just giants of the 12, 15, 18, even 25 foot giants. And then the more I dove into it, kind of like you were talking about, there were giant, there were Titans here, Titans the size of literal mountains that probably are, their remains are probably the mountains. And, and again, that's talked about in the Bible too. Um, you know, there were giants in those days. And, you know, after the flood, it says there were giants as well, but they were of a smaller variety. Yeah, that's pretty wild. Uh, one of the other things I wanted to mention, which made me question things a long time ago, but I didn't really get the answer until I got into this whole thing about the flat earth. The Bible passage that talks about Jesus returning. And it says when he returns, that the whole world can see him. And for a number of years, I thought to myself, how could the whole world see him if we're a sphere and we spin around? If you're in Florida... And, you know, somebody else is over in China, you know, on the other side of the earth, if it's a sphere like they've told us, how could two, two people in there see that at the same time? Which I don't believe they can. The whole thing, when you see the sphere and then you see the North Pole, if he comes down from the north, that whole thing can be seen by the entire world. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, it sure makes a lot more sense on a 
on a flat earth. That's for darn sure. Uh, well, the, the other thing that kind of got my attention on the whole flat earth thing was the fact that, you know, I've asked myself for a number of years, where was the real biblical Eden, the garden of God? And uh, when I started researching all this stuff about the flat earth, it appears that it's up there at the North Pole. Um, what are your thoughts on that? And I didn't even know that there, there's like some type of a magnetic rock or something that's there at the North Pole. And uh, the, the company BlackRock, who's the number one investor company in the world, named their company after that. What, what, you got anything to say about that? I know it's a little bit different conversation, but it's kind of tied into everything because it does seem that that the real Eden is somehow connected to that North Pole that they want to dismiss. Yeah, I would agree. I, I've actually heard people have theories about it being in Florida, um, but I've never agreed with that. I think the the people that have said it about Florida, um, the two biggest reasons people say it is because of the the four rivers that come into Florida and also the types of trees that are mentioned in the Bible that only exist in like 22 out of the 23 trees in the Bible that are mentioned only exist in Florida. But I, I agree with what you're saying. I think it's in the north. I think our compasses point to a giant magnetic rock at the center of our flat realm. And, you know, for people that can't picture what a flat earth would be um, with a compass, north would be like, if you just, it sounds silly, but if you think of it as a pizza, and I'm not saying it's a pizza, but just for visualization, the very center of that pizza would be the north. And that's where a giant, the giant black rock um, magnetic mountain called Mount Maru or Rupus Nigra is, um, is there. It's what all our compasses point at. Everything away from that rock is south. And then east and west works in kind of a circular fashion around it. Like if you're going left, it's west. If you're going right, it's east. Because east and west aren't straight lines. Like we're led to believe it's kind of a circular pattern. Um, but I mean, yeah, when you look into it, you're not allowed to go there. You're not allowed to go to the North Pole. There's something called the Arctic Treaty, just like there's an Antarctic Treaty. Um, they have something set up called the Dew Line that was set up in the, it was supposedly set up in the Cold War era to know if anyone was coming across that North Pole from Russia. But in my opinion, it's a surveillance to know if anyone is getting anywhere close to the North Pole. Um, and I, you know, I think there potentially not only is a giant black rock there, but maybe that we live in this toroidal field and there's an energy system coming out of there. And that could be, you know, how the uh, firmament is formed. I'm not really sure, but I, all I know for sure is we should have the right to go explore there and we don't, no one can go anywhere close to the North Pole. Um, yeah. And I, I think there's a good chance that that's where the garden Eden is. I think there's a good chance that's at actually where real Jerusalem is. I, there's there's something amazing there that they're not letting us go by. And, you know, I think a big reason for that is probably the time period we're living in. If we all knew what was actually there, then we would know we didn't live on a globe and we would know God is real and they couldn't pull off this giant deceit that's been pulling up, or being pulled off on everyone right now. So um, I know we're getting to the end of this video here. If uh, a number of people wanted to learn more, because I know there's going to be a number of people that are going to see this video for the first time. And to some people, it's going to raise questions. To other people, they're going to think, well, these guys, they're crazy. I can't believe they're talking about this stuff. Um, are there any specific websites or other people like Dave Weiss and others like him that you would say, I would highly recommend you check this information out, this website, this YouTube channel, this whatever. To, to yeah, it's, an, you know? it, it's such a good question because this is what happens is people first hear about this and they just go right to Google or they go right to YouTube and they have no idea, just like I didn't have any idea how censored it is. And what I mean by censored is you won't even get information of that lines up with what I believe or what you believe. It's going to be information that is meant to m misguide you or deceive you. Um, if you literally type in flat earth on Google, it will give you the first things will be disproving flat earth. It will be, it will literally give you information that will make you think flat earth is dumb and people like myself and Greg are idiots and it's not real information. It won't be things we actually believe. So um, 
there are a few places where you can go for sure. There, uh, flatearthdave.com. Uh, he's got a wealth of information there. There's even an app you can download. And I honestly, the app is the best thing because if you download the app, then um, there's a search bar in it. And anything you have a question about, you can literally search and say, you know, how do the seasons work on a flat earth? How does night and day work on a flat earth? And it's there. You will get an answer. You will get a video accompanying that answer. And it will allow you to seek and explore and make decisions yourself versus just being told one way or another. Um, so flatearthdave.com. If you're a TikTok person, go check out my videos. Um, fittest flat earther. But I'm sure a lot of people listening to this probably aren't TikTok people. Um, flatearthdave.com. The, there's a podcast called... Uh, there's a podcast called The Flat Earth Files that I think is amazing. That's where I kind of started yeah, trying to, great. yeah, George is great. He um, puts out great information and he talks to people just about their journey to figuring out the truth. So, um, but his first like five to 10 episodes, I think are just kind of talking about why the lie and how the lie and how things work. So Flat Earth Files or flatearthdave.com um, are awesome. I would go check both those places out. Don't go type in flat earth on Google or YouTube or go do it just so you can see um, that you'll be fed nonsense. Well, you're not just fed nonsense. You're they they insult anybody that believes in it because they think they're crazy. They've lost their mind. They're cuckoo. And yet when you start seeing all the videos and you start seeing all the proof and you start seeing all the science that backs up the fact that the earth really is flat and all the Bible scriptures that talk about the, the firmament and everything else, it starts raising a lot of questions. Anybody with common sense is going to start looking at that. But yeah, yep. anybody that questions it, if they go to Google or they go to YouTube and type it up, all the stuff that's going to badger anybody that believes in it is what's going to pop up first. And I've got a family member that was talking to me about it. And uh, he pulled up that video where Dave Weiss was getting interviewed by uh, Dave Farina. And, you know, so Dave Farina sounds like an expert. You know, he's got the scientific credentials and all that but i watched it long enough to connect the dots and find out that he believes in evolution he believes in big bang and so he's he wants to be patted on the back as the so so-called expert who knows that the flat earth's all lies but yet he believes the worst lies of all lies and that is evolution and big bang right there to begin with i don't know what absolutely the are on that but yeah well and it I mean, there are so many people that are intentionally deceiving. And for me, it's just, I mean, just literally try to look into someone's heart and soul and what they're doing. Because I think a lot of times the deceivers, they mock people. They're, they're all about mockery. They're all about making it look dumb. And then there are people like you and I who are just caring people that are sincere and just want people to see truth and not be deceived anymore. And I think if you look at it with an eye of, all right, is this person just trying to mock and ridicule? And like, because those aren't honest people with whatever they talk about. So I think there's an element of just looking at people's sincerity to help you see the truth. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it, Tyler. Yeah, no problem, my friend. And uh, have a good day. I'll, we'll be in touch.